Today on Steve Harvey, this bodybuilder is looking for love. I want a good man that's going to treat me like a lady. So Steve helps her spot the perfect guy. That's awesome. Good. Oh, my God. That's no. awesome. <laughs> then a pet psychic gives Steve and his wife something to chew on. Who shuts them out of a room? They think that's very rude. Who told you that? <laughs> and how this thank you brought Steve to tears. I wasn't counting on this right here. I'm here to help. You and I will get through this together. Okay, good. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. And uh, you are in for an exciting ride today. I got a real good one for you. Ladies, let me ask you a question. Do some of you feel like men are intimidated by you? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's your smarts you think that's doing it. Maybe it's your drive or just the fact that you know what you want. Well, I got a woman here looking for love, but she says that men shy away from her because of her looks. Just simply her looks. Nothing more. Here's a photo. She's a female bodybuilder. That's what it is. And I'm helping her meet the perfect guy today. And later on, we got a real-life medical detective who overcame some serious odds to find success. Now, what he doesn't know is that a special person in his life also is here to say thank you in a big way. It's a really inspiring story about forgiveness. You won't want to miss that. Uh, but first, uh, I want to know what's on your mind. It's time for Ask Steve. Thanks. And later a pioneer in the field of forensics. I was the first black man in FBI DNA laboratories. Gets a big surprise. <laughs> and a very emotional thank you. I thank you for not giving up on me. Coming up next, a story of redemption and forgiveness. The cocaine guy, the fast lifestyle guy. So now he is a substance abuse counselor at the Veterans Hospital. <laughs> Leads us to our most emotional thank you ever. Okay, uh, I wasn't counting on this right here. Uh... Uh, welcome back, folks. CSI, Dexter, The Closer, Law and Order. There are so many shows that make investigating death look really cool. But what does it take to become a real-life medical examiner? My next guest knows very well. He's a pathologist, a writer, and the youngest African-American to ever serve as a chief medical examiner. What he doesn't know is that there's someone very special here that wants to thank him. Please welcome New Jersey's chief medical examiner, Dr. Roger A. Mitchell, Jr. What's up, man? How you feeling? Good to see you, Pleasure. Pleasure, man. Welcome to the show. All right, all right, all right. Good. Ah. Well, welcome to the show. How well, you doing? Yeah, let me just ask you this. Yeah. You study dead bodies. What made you get into that field? You know, I give a voice to the voiceless. You know, I provide uh, information to the community about violence, mm -hmm. um, whether it's homicide or suicide. I provide this information so it can be used in a way where programs and policy can be established to decrease this problem in our community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now, we got all of these shows out. Do these shows really depict uh, your profession or your field? 
the utility that it has is that science, technology, engineering, medicine, sometimes the kids that watch these shows, the teenagers, that's the only exposure they have to, to, to that type of thing. So for that standpoint, it's really good. And that was my exposure. I got exposed um, on the OJ trial back when I was at Howard studying uh, DNA. And then um, I said, I want to be a forensic scientist. And so I moved on, and I was the, the first black man in FBI DNA laboratories. You're the youngest black uh, medical examiner. Uh, you were one of the first uh, African-American forensic biologists. How does your family feel about your accomplishments? They feel real good. Um, and, and they should because they played such a good part, uh, a big part, in, in my accomplishments. So your mom was pivotal. Yes. For you. Yes. Uh, was your dad in your life? My dad was in my life to about eight years old, eight to ten years old. Good man. Um, but fell to that disease, that addiction. Um, cocaine got him. The fast lifestyle got him. Mm -hmm. um, and so really was in and out of my life from about eight to about 20. You, you say your dad was in and out your life. Sure. Do you have a relationship with him now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My dad is... Um, actually one of my best friends now. Um, my dad is, uh, uh, is clean. Uh, when I was about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when, when, when I was about um, uh, 22, he called. When he got to the point where he was down and out, it was important for him to call out. He knew he needed help, so we went and got him. I went and brought him into my home. I, that was, I was at the bureau then. Had to let my chief know, hey, I'm bringing my dad into my yeah, house now, yeah. you know. So I brought him in. We worked it out, man. I got him into an um, outpatient program, then got him into an inpatient program. And when he went into an inpatient program, let me show you how God works, that was my time to move on to medical school. So, I mean, it, I mean, it couldn't have been orchestrated yeah. better. So now my dad is a substance abuse counselor at the Veterans Hospital. <laughs> yeah. I heard about this story. So I, I had to bring you on because I love uh, stories like this okay. about redemption and everything. I love forgiveness. I love mm. people who stay with it, who come back. From his dad to his co-workers, uh, Dr. Mitchell has touched many lives. And when we come back, uh, someone is here to offer their big-time thanks. You touch somebody's life, oh, wow. and you may not understand the impact you truly have. Wow. When we come back, we're going to find out who that mystery guest is. And I know wow. you don't like surprises no. because your wife told us That's you right. didn't. That's right. So I'm yeah. sitting I'm, I'm yeah. trying to yeah. chill out yeah. on yeah. you. Oh, you're looking crazy <laughs> right now. We'll be back, find out who it is right after this. <laughs> I'm back with New Jersey's regional medical examiner, Dr. Roger Mitchell. And before the break, I told Dr. Mitchell that he's done so much for so many people that one of those people wanted to say thank you. So it's really time to find out who it is. So, uh, no, you don't like surprises, but uh, here we go. Uh, let's have our mystery thank you guest come on up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you I love you, man. <laughs> you all right. I love you, man. Oh, man. I love you, too, man. I love you, too, man. Come on in, man. Come on over here and sit up. Now, Dr. Mitchell, who is this man right here? Man, this is my father. Can you see the resemblance? I mean, it's my dad. It's uh, my dad. Come on. Roger, I just want to take this opportunity to tell you I thank you. <laughs> man, I, I, th I thank you for, for not giving up on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank yeah. you. I thank you for being there for me. Wow. I, I thank you for being my best friend. Yeah. I thank you for all the things you inspired me to move on. I heard you before telling that I was a, a addiction counselor, but I even moved on from there because of you. You made it one way, and now I'm a licensed certified addiction counselor level two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for you in my life, you just stood there and you waited until you knew that I was on the right path, and you went back to school. That's right. I love you. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love you too. Man. 
Okay, uh, wasn't counting on this right here. Uh, Amen. So, yeah. yeah amen. Okay, so hearing your father, how does this make you feel? Listen, you know, it's important for people to understand the power of forgiveness. Uh, uh, and what it takes when there's a weight that you have to carry called the grudge. But when you can forgive and mm. you can say that no matter what, that I'm going to love them no matter what and it doesn't matter, then you're truly loving like Christ Amen. loved the world. Amen. Amen. Come on, Ryan. And so, so I feel great because he knows I love him. But I've always known he loved me. So I have to stand by. See, the part in this that has me uh, jacked is because of my mentoring program. This is all that I really try to accomplish. See, any man can be a father. Amen. But when somebody call you daddy, that's right. That means you putting in work. And I just love to see, man, when men, especially in our community, to see it come back around, yeah. that's an emotional grip for me. Yeah. And I want to invite both of you out to my mentoring camp on Father's Day weekend. I just spoke to you about yes. it already. Yeah. To yeah. just come out, man, and, and share your story. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pop, I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks to my guests. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, I wish you continued success. And you're so deep. And you, you my man. <laughs> hey, we'll be right back, folks. Stay right here, Pop. Where you going? <laughs>